Hello everyone and thank you for visiting my channel, The Gamer Hippie. This is my player Tabuka and we're going to go over how to make money in the world of Tamriel on The Elder Scrolls Online. So this is my goal, making tooltips. I hope that you enjoy it and we're going to go through some things. Uh, I would like to separate this into two and I want you to remember that this is going to be whether or not you have specific DLCs. So if you have the Thieves Guild DLC and if you have the Brotherhood DLC and then if you do not have those DLCs yet and you're just on the core game. So the first thing we're going to cover is the Thieves Guild and the Brotherhood and why you need these traits. So we're going to go check out the Thieves Guild first. So Thieves Guild can be found in Hughes Bane. This is Hughes Bane, right? And uh, this is Abba's Landing where the city is. And the Thieves Guild is right around the corner. So we're gonna go here fast. Beautiful world of Abba's Landing and Hughes Bane. Welcome to part of Alakir. Where the Red Guard come from. And if we run to this location, we see this giant thieves guild here. This is. So the DLC gives you access to this location in the world and this thieves there here. Alright, so why do you want Thieves Guild? Well, the reason you want Thieves Guild is because this is one of the really, really good ways to make money. Let me explain. So, you can steal things, and if you steal them, you have to sell them to a fence. Now, you have Thieves Guild all over the place, so it's, it's not a big deal for you to sell stolen things to a fence. Not a problem, right? Uh, and you depending on your level you get different things, but here's the great stuff about thieves guild And I want you to check this out So if I am going here We're gonna go to skills. I'm gonna go to There we go Thieves guild These abilities actually help you. Whoops. I don't know why I didn't have these uh, these help you to make money faster. So, Finders Keepers. When you have this ability for the Thieves Guild, it helps you find Thieves Troves. Thieves Troves are all over the place, and they're located all over Tamriel. You will see them glowing purple, and as, as long if you're out in the forest or out and about, you can just grab it. But sometimes there's people around, so you have to hide before you take it. It will end up being stolen goods, so you will have to take it to a fence to either be cleaned or to sell it. Um, we have Swiftly Forgotten, where your bounty is decreased by 115 every 3 minutes. This is when it's maxed out. And the heat is decreased by 64 after 3 minutes, which is how long the guards are going to be pissed at you. Next is Haggling. At the maxed out 4 out of 4, Stolen items sold at the fence over 10% more. This doesn't apply to laundering the item. It doesn't save you money laundering. It only gives you 10% more when you're selling it, stolen items at the fence. Clemency. So one time. <laughs> Just one time and one time only. You can use clemency so the guards let you go. You know, it's like your get out of jail card free, uh, get out of jail free card. But you can only use this once. Um, I believe it's once in a cycle. So if you commit other crimes, you will not get to use it again once you've used that. Then there is timely escape. If you are 
and have a bounty because you decided to assassinate or steal something from someone and you got caught, you have a chance to spot a thief, a footpad, they're kind of sneaky looking, in the town um, with a refuge. So anywhere there's a thieves guild, uh, a thieves refuge, you will find a footpad somewhere. And if you interact with the footpad, the footpad will take you to the nearest uh, refuge. So that's called Timely Escape. Next is the Veil of Shadows, which I absolutely love. This decreases the detection range of all witnesses and guards, so it makes it easier for you to sneak and steal things. Witnesses and guards are less likely to notice criminal actions, right? But this has no impact on the guards itself from you know, how they're going to like assault you or hurt you. So there is no hiding from the guards once they see you. You can't just go into sneak and they'll go away. You have to get far enough away from them to just for their heat to go down to where they, you know, either the area of effect. So they just turn around and, and accept defeat. <laughs> So they're still gonna be, uh, they're still gonna be in the assault range. It, that doesn't change that at all. And the Dark Brotherhood, right? Assassination is important, children. The Blade of Woe is the very first thing you can get. If you never do any other uh, DLC uh, quest line with the Dark Brotherhood, at least get the very first quest done, which gives you the Blade of Woe. So if you deliver the killing blow to someone, the experience from the target is reduced by 75% because you didn't actually kill them in combat. It doesn't work on other players or really hard targets, only basic uh, NPCs. The scales of piddly, piddless justice reduces your bounty and your heat when someone notices you either hitting or murdering somebody. <laughs> Um, I don't have this all the way up. This is not maxed out. This is beautiful. It This makes you super fast right after you kill someone with the Blade of Will, which is helpful for escape. Um, shadowy Supplier. This person is... I'm going to show you this person. This is a contact that's inside all of the outlawed refuge, uh, refugees. Refuges, I'm sorry. Um, Anywhere you have it, it, this also includes the Gold Coast and this uh, Hughes Bane Thieves Den. And then the Shadow Rider. The aggression radius from hostile monsters is decreased by 50% while mounted. This alone is amazing for you when you're just riding through Tamriel. You have a chance to just go past monsters and not have them trigger combat for you. And then Spectral Assassin is when you actually use a Blade of Oil to assassinate something, someone they, it actually kind of makes you invisible for a second, shielding you from being witnessed and receiving a bounty. But that means you have to beat feet and get out of that place really quick. All right, and then I will express, I will show you exactly why having these two things is important. So this is the Dark Brotherhood additional person. Once a day, she will either give you poisons or potions. She will give you something that will either help you with your bounty or help you stay invisible. Or she will give you items and, and set items that help you to stay quiet and sneak around and do your nasties. Right? So that happens for free every 20 hours. So free stuff. Why can I not get this back? I can't get back. Okay. There's the merchant, but she's one of the reasons why you want Dark Brotherhood. She'll give you free items every day. And so, now I'm going to show you. Oh, uh, this is the wrong spot. I'm going to show you how you make money with these two DLCs. We're going to go on a murder steal. Murder steal. It's actually, uh, there's something specific you have to go, right? I want you to remember, I know I just passed a shiny. That is so unlikely. There is a pattern to theft and murder. It is the correct way for you to be um, polite. It's steal, steal, stab. I know that sounds horrible, but it is true. Steal, steal, stab. And steal, steal, stab is only for people, okay? not four items. You can steal any items that you want. 
This makes it harder for you to see, so you can go ahead and just freely take whatever you want. But as far as people, it's going to be difficult where she's still standing there. You want to wait. He is aware of me, so you want to just hold on. You can see that the Blade of Woe selection has come up, but he is aware of me. So I can't pickpocket him. Alright, there we go. So, you have a 70% chance. Wait until it's its highest, and you pickpocket. Then you wait until he's no longer suspicious again. The chance is going to go down. Every time you do it, it will come down just a little bit. And then I'm not going to be able to stab him. But he is only has one more item on him that I could steal. So in order for him to refresh faster so that other people can steal from him, you have to stab him with the Blade of Woe. <laughs> this resets the character. And it works best when Pitpock is right there. Make sure there are no witnesses, so we'll wait for her cycle to go away. And she is far enough away for me to go murder, death, kill. Maybe. It's not letting me do it. Ah, okay, so now I'm disreputable. I'm gonna have to kill him, kick, before someone else sees me kill him. And he's dead. All right, so now I have a bounty. Ah, I killed two of them. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> oh, look. He had some nice stuff. <laughs> so, um, wait a minute. She's right there. How is she dead? Anyway, there's a guard right there. <laughs> so, it's stab, stab. I mean, uh, steal, steal, stab. And then, having these beautiful leniency edicts you can actually remove the heat from yourself. This is a counterfeit pardon edict, which is the lowest one you can have. It actually clears 500 of your bounty on immediately as soon as you use it. So now I am no longer wanted. I am now upstanding because I forged myself a I'm innocent. I'm innocent, I promise I did nothing. Right, so uh, with time, knowing how things work, uh, you can actually steal, steal, stab, steal, steal, stab, steal, steal, stab to your heart's content. The reason why that's important is because there are levels of gear. So, uh, and these prices are only if you're maxed out in gear skills. Um, you'll have your basic treasure type. You have your... Uh, your I forgot what they call it. Your medium, I guess. And then you'll have your blue, which is 250 is actually nice. But then there's also purple, and there are gold stolen items. Right? So you get to decide how you want, uh, whether or not you want to take that, if you have no inventory space, or whether or not you're not caring about that and just want to steal everything. Now, the additional way that you would make money is to actually get these stolen items and turn them in as part of quests. So in the Thieves Guild, as you level up and finish your questing, you have something that is happens over and over and over again. It is an unlimited amount of time that you can uh, grind it out. So. I will show you exactly which one to take. This is Velsa, and this is your tip board, right? So every once in a while, you'll see this. Rumors that the guild isn't a threat. Um, we don't want that one. You can keep going back and forth, and it keeps giving you different things. That's not what we're looking for. For. We're looking up for, for a particular quest, and it's for a specific lady 
who is always looking for stolen goods for some reason. This is a little strange. But that is the fastest way. So you do not have to actually steal things and only clean them. You can turn these in to a, project, a special person. And this person actually gives you more money. There it is. So, esteemed thieves. Make sure you look for those two words. I need your help. My wealth is vast and my wants are few. What I cherish most is that which I cannot simply buy. Well-lived objects, near and dear to their owners from all walks of life. It is my last pleasure. Details attached. So you're going to read the contact. It says, payment for stolen goods as requested will be rendered to the guild immediately, provided they have all traces of ownership severed prior to delivery. No partial deliveries will be accepted. What does this mean? That means that you have to steal these particular items that she wants. Okay, and make sure you go and check that out so that you know exactly which ones it is. You have to clean cosmetics, linens, and accessories. So instead of selling them to... Oh, that is the wrong way. Instead of selling them, you are going to have to clean them at the fence. So she said she wanted linens. I do not have any of these, but you can see that this is games and oddities, musical instruments, artwork and smithing, children's toys, statues, trifles, ornaments, um, dolls or smithing equipment. All of these can be cleaned and turned in. Um, it's best just to stick to the white or the green. They're really easy to get. So Taylor's best friend I can actually sell because that's really high. Um, and none of these are worth cleaning. So the fun thing with the Thieves Guild is when you find these Thief Caches. When you find those Thief Caches, those Thief Caches already have 10 of a selected item. So it can have 10 um, clothing items, it can have 10 smithing items, it can have 10 oddities. Um, but it's always going to be... Uh, a certain amount of oddities you clean it at the fence after you open it and then you turn it into the countess and it is that simple let's go steal some linens and other clothing accessories there we go this is exactly what we're looking for this is a thieves show there really is no one around so you don't have to worry about hiding to take it you see this large stolen shipment you can actually open this stolen shipment and it will show you 10 clothiers tape, right, as that's the smithing equipment and tools. That's what you're looking for. It actually saves you lots of time from stealing from individuals, but you can steal from individuals if you like. That's not a problem. Oh, I just found a good thing. So stabbing, killing, murdering, taking their things. Um, cleaning it and using the Covetous Countess quest, which starts with Esteemed Thieves on the tip board. That is one way for you to make money. If you have those DLCs, that is a great way to make money. A secondary way to make money that's really good is, of course, what you've seen me already doing, is picking up everything. So everything is worth something unless it's a craftable, like a, a crafted item that is only used for deconning. So every flower, every insect, everything has value in the world of Tanriel. If you kill animals, it's highly likely that you are going to get rubido hide scraps or depending on your crafting level, you will get, you will get the uh, raw material for the level of crafter that you are in that particular um, so clothing, blacksmithing, jewelry making, woodworking, you can get that. But every single one of these flowers and runes and guts, and when you kill small animals, you collect game, those are all crafting items and crafters need those consistently. I mean consistently. Um, they sell really well if you do not have your crafting all the way up, then sell the raw materials as they are. People will buy them. They will move 
super fast. Um, and you don't have to clean them. You don't need the DLCs for either the Thieves Guild or um, for the Dark Brotherhood. But the sets that you can buy that make you faster, I call them farming gear. That is quite helpful. So for example, I'm going to go into my dressing room and I'm, you're going to, did I take it off? No, you're going to see farming gear. My farming gear, because these don't stack, right? I use the coward's gear because it does make you faster. You'll see how fast here in a moment. I'm already fast. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna assign this. And then you can see right here that I now have the coward's gear. This actually helps with your stamina recovery, which helps with sprinting. And then while you're sprinting, you gain major expedition and major protection. So it protects you and makes you 30% faster. Right. Those numbers change depending on the level. So you can see here that this is blue and this is not. This isn't even a full level for me. I don't know why that even slipped through. <laughs> the rest of these are level 50 CP160, which is the highest you can get for weapons and armor right now. This guy I'm going to have to replace. But um, Coward's Gear is farming set. Absolutely remember that if you're going to be picking up shinies, it makes you really fast. Now, how fast you craft used to only depend on whether or not you were a crafter. It actually is in the line for for you to um, pick up crafting notes faster. But now they added this champion point system, and I've noticed that. Um, where I used to hit something before once and gather it, now I have to hit it s like several times in order to get it, which I think is, I think it almost, it almost makes some of the, some of the passives in uh, crafting, it just makes it obsolete. And, and they kind of took away instead of adding to. Um, that's one of the reasons why you need this gear because if you did not put in your points in your champion to be able to get that oh i totally forgot about this person say so bad pirate bad pirate so when you are picking up shinies you want to try and get a path that doesn't have much monsters, uh, especially if you're not uh, geared for doing maximum damage, unless you're actually looking for um, leather working or material, especially leather working. Um, these beetles, beetles drop something that is absolutely needed for certain kinds of uh, foods and potions. You definitely want to make sure that you have this. Maybe it'll give it to us. It didn't give it to me this time. Um, but the beetle's carapace is hard. You can farm for it, but it sells for a lot. So you're like, why do I have to pick up shiny things? I will show you in a minute. I will try and pick up some raw mats. Oh, it's raining. I will try and pick up some raw mats so that you can see. Even torch bugs. Right? There's a torch bug thorax. Um, torch bugs are great, and some so are the bugs. Uh, everything that you have can, that you can pick is amazing to have. All right, so I'm gonna go into my crafting bag, and because I have ATT and I also have Tamil Trade Center add-ons, it lets me know what the value of something is currently from people who have already been selling it. So this dragon thorn in the circles that I run in and have been selling for um, is selling for 184 a piece. That's 184 gold. I actually bump it up because it says 0.5. So it's 185 gold per one of these dragon porn. right? And you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much. It is, it's a lot. So you could just pick up some of these and put them in the market. And um, this is what a lot of 
crafters and farmers or just regular average players do to make money. This is Mountain Flower. It's used in healing potions um, to restore health and stamina and increase armor. So a lot of those higher level potions absolutely have to have Mountain Flower. This is 190. I would sell it from 192. Let's see, I'm picking up bugs, right? Why am I picking up torch bugs in Hughes Bane? It's because this torch bug thorax is worth 100, 495 gold a piece. A piece. So this is how you make money, right? Besides just theft and stabbing people, this is how you also can make money. Uh, that means that you have to belong to a trading guild because you want access uh, to their merchant. And I run with Forever Trading and the East Empire Trading Company, which is really good. There are some really good trade guilds out there. And yes, a lot of them come with uh, dues that you have to pay or it's either dues or they want you to sell a minimum amount of things, right? Like your sales have to equal so much. But if you are keeping your listings, like every two or three days, maxing out your listings and keeping an eye, and especially if you're only selling um, crafting materials like that, they will sell and they will sell quickly. Now, as far as if you don't have, you don't want to craft, you just want to make money. Um, I would still want you to level up your crafting because that will give you access to the higher level crafting materials and also help you to break those down. If I was to sell these raw, rough ruby ash, right, this is a raw material, it's worth about 40, 40 each. And this is how you make the highest level shields, stabs, and bows, right? If I was to break those down, it actually becomes components that I can sell separately. The reason why that's important is because when you break them down, you get resin, and resin is for woodworking. This is how you level up your weapon, right? So you will take it from normal to fine, and then you will take it from fine to superior, from superior to epic, and then from epic to legendary. So you see this rosin? This rosin is worth 4,335 from what I have and my information. Some people charge higher than that because they they can and the people will buy it because people will buy it um, as long as it's not like super outrageous. It takes, even when you're maxed out, it takes eight of these rosin to get an item from epic to legendary. And that's why I actually will break these down, but I am maxed out. So remember, when you go to your crafting, We'll use woodworking because we're already on example. My woodworking is 10. I already know what wood looks like, so I don't have to have keen eye wood to three. I just need one in darker places so it does glow and highlight for me. I have a hireling that gives me items every single day, every 20 hours. But this one is most important, the wood extraction. It allows you to pull woodworking ingredients and powerful, the more powerful upgrading items from the raw materials. Without that, you're just kind of wasting the raw materials. If you do not have this to level two or level three, I would just suggest that you sell the raw mats altogether. And they will sell. They will absolutely sell. So um, if you're leveling them up, you definitely want to do anything or power up anything to reduce the time of your research um, but you need the extraction you want to make sure that you have metalworking the hireling that gives you free stuff every 20 hours that's what you need for the making of the money this is what you need to upgrade your items without it'll be the last one every time this is what you need to upgrade your items and it's gonna double your chance to improve and you'll use less tempers to get to 100% chance of improving. You can lose that item and all the tempers, or not, you'll lose all the tempers if you don't get 100%. If you get 75%, there's still a chance that you're going to lose all of those tempers and not being able to do it, which costs you money. So 
Make sure it's set to 100 before you even try. All right, so there are several also quests that will make you money quicker. So let's go check out the quests. Uh, if you, and, and everybody does now, it's, it's not so much a DLC. Um, Craglorn. This is Craglorn. Besides being a great place to farm for shinies, for you to sell on the market. Um, there are thieves, troves, there are uh, a lot of the weapon sets are worth um, keeping here for beginners. But this is a very hard place to be. This is like you need to be a level 50 or higher to run around here. However, if you are leveling and you have pets or you're doing it with friends, however it is, you can go to the Valley of Scars Way Shrine that is located here. Alright, so now we are at the Valley of Scars Way Shrine. Right, I said everything has value, so that's why I am practically everywhere I go, you'll see me picking up things, even bugs. Right, all those insect parts, worms, and guts, people use them for fishing, and fishing is the only way that you can get perfect row, which is a legendary crafting item. You need them to make the best foods of the game, and at the high level best selling furniture in the game as well. So when you are here, there are two quests that you want to grab. You want to grab this quest from Scattered Leaves. And I am sure that you can read that later. So Taken Alive is one of them. The next thing you want to do is run down the road a bit. And off to the left, next to a tree, severely hurt, is this orc called Lashbur Toothbreaker. So you can see he's really angry, but he does ask you to, you know, REVENGE! He wants revenge against a leader that has bowed down and is working with a scared corpse. So, it's actually pretty simple. I remember, anything that's red, you wanna be hiding. That's not really worth stealing right now. Oh, and for shinies, one more thing. If you do see pure water, you need pure water to make potions. So, um, and it's the high end level potions, right? The highest ones. And that's great money. It is really good money. If you, s anyone that sees it that makes potions or crafts, they buy it. So if you put it on the market, someone will buy it. All right, so we are gonna go in here. So you look at the map, we're now in this valley. I'm sorry, there's fishing nodes everywhere. This is a great place to do river fishing. But this is also where both of these quests are located. So for Lashbur, we have to burn standards first. And okay, anything worth stealing? Oh, water is always worth stealing. Okay, scattered leaves. Fed him to the trolls. So you get 338 gold plus a Yokodin coffer of humility. The Yokodin coffer of humility. Will give you uh, some. Sometimes it'll give you various salts, but it'll always give you a piece of armor that you can use. And you can see that the average price for this armor on the market 
is about 900 gold. Right? This is actually a stamina build armor, so those are pretty good. You don't have to open them if you don't want to, you just leave it in your coffin. Um, now for Lashbur, I'll run over to his tree and tell him, oh, we did forget one really important thing. We forgot to put hat on Spike. That is what you have to do. So you are going to go up this giant platform, which is at the beginning of the valley. And you're going to mic the helmet on the pike. Like so. Come on. Like so. Ta-da! Helmet on pike. Now you're going to go back to last for Toothbreaker and let him know that the deed is done. So that he can either recover or die in peace, whichever comes first. It is done! It is done. Wow, that's really cool. If he did have a tribe, I would be welcome there. Alright, so you get 338 gold again, and then the Yokin and Cogner of Merit. And this, we get a crafting motif that's worth about 10,000 gold. The Ring of Martial Knowledge is worth 812 gold um, because <laughs> it's rare. But you can look at how much the temper is if you were to break it down. If the temper for what you're going to break down is worth more than the item itself, it's worth it to make sure that your um, extracting is at its highest before you do that. And then of course more um, crafting items for the style that you can get from this region. So that's actually a really good haul. So for a lot of crafting guilds, um, their weekly is about 10,000 a week, or sometimes as high as 20,000 a week, um, depending on where your merchant is located. If they're located in some uh, very prestigious non-DLC cities, so basic cities, those are worth millions uh, of dollars betting to you know to bid on those places to keep it so of course if they're in places like Mournhold, um, Stormhaven they're paying a pretty penny to stay in there anywhere from 20 million to sometimes a hundred million gold that the trade guild is paying for so the high, the better the location the higher you're probably going to have to pay um, for those weekly dues which is usually not a problem. Dues usually come with raffles, tickets, um, prizes, events. So, uh, and and we just saw that we got uh, that though just those two quests already covered what dues would be. Um, so that happens a lot. And if you are willing to spend money to make money, which is how the world works, then absolutely a trade guild is perfect for you. Forever Trading is a really good guild. That's the guild that I run with. There is one more way for you to make money very quickly besides these two quests. Um, and we're going to go check that out right now. And we're going to go back to one of my favorite haunts because everything is in one place. So we're going to talk about crafting. Crafting is a need to if you want gold. I'm, I'm, there's no other way that I can put that. Um, in Vardenfell or in any of the main 
cities, your beginner cities, um, you will find that you will be assigned somewhere where you're talking to crafters. These are two crafters, Melanith and Daniel Taleno. You will find one in the Fighters Guild and one near the Mages Guild, or sometimes they are standing outside like so. But even in Vivek City, you have to actually start the quest line inside of either the Thieves Guild, I mean the Fighters Guild or the Mages Guild. So that would be uh, in that direction there. You can see uh, before you get to the large ziggurat, it's that section right there is the temple and the shrine and this section right here you see the fighters guild and the mages guild that's where you would go in vivic city um, to get those quest lines started but when you do you will see markers over these boards equipment crafting writs remember that crafting writs that went super fast um, I just clicked it and picked everything up automatically. That's because of an add-on that I had talked about before. Um, this add-on right... Where are you? Uh, I can't see it. It's really fast, and it's not Votan's. <laughs> my libs, all my libraries, here it is. <laughs> There's Rick Worthy. Right, which does it really quickly for you. It calculates the materials cost and automates your crafting. Automatically does it for you. So this is something that you want to have to help you make money when you're crafting. And it requires other add-ons. So Rick Worthy uh, definitely will help you to see if it's actually worthy of doing and automatically do your writs. So it will pull all of these. And then you can see how it's highlighted in red. You're just going to hit use. And as long as you have everything you need, it'll just automatically do it. Um, Dolgubans, there it is. Dol Dolgubans Lazy Writ Creator. And then Writ Worthy actually helps you to see whether or not something is worth crafting to sell. Because it'll tell you how much things cost versus uh, how much you're going to get for it. And as soon as I am done crafting all these things, you can see for a lot of these, even though I'm maxed out, I'm only creating basic food. And it's really nice that these are just totally automatic. Just run and click. And I already have what I need for the alchemization, but I am stealing this one. <laughs> Theft is life. Okay. Now, when you go to turn them in, I want you to look at how much each of them is going to cost. Plus, remember, these also give you experience. And not just experience and inspiration for your crafting to level up your crafting, but to level yourself up. So if you have something that boosts your XP, please do that before you do it. So we're going to start with this blacksmith delivery crate first. So 676 gold, plus it gave you rubidite ore and some other things, plus a good amount of XP, I think it's 3.8. 676 gold and a work worker's case of which it should have automatically opened, but it did not. So it gave us uh, usually something that's going to help you level up if you decline. That's crafting. And again, crafting coffer. Coffers are not opening. Provision your pack. There they go. Zircon grains. So all of these things that I'm opening. That last one just gave me 2,700 gold. Or actually that was these three combined. So all of that plus what you can get from what you can sell. 
because we just picked up a fragment here. We have a sealed enchanting writ, um, which sells very well because they're pretty easy to make and they give you writs, which cost money. And then we also picked up some sanded mahogany and I did see a zircon in there. Yeah. Yep, we picked up all of these and this guy right here costs uh, practically 6,800 gold. So we got one of those. So that was just from the crafting items. If you do those every day, you're going to make money. If you thieve every day and turn in, do a couple of contest quests, you will get money. This is a great way to make money without needing any additional DLCs. You can do the crafting and you can pick up items and sell them. Um, do not sell them at the merchant, this merchant, this basic merchant. You have to sell them through a trade guild's craft uh, merchant. I'll show you what I mean. All of these guys, you see? Dragon Lair. They're always at the somewhere near a city. There's uh, Feline Good of Mokvarium. They're always there. The Dragon Lair. And these people compete to keep these spots. Immoral Trading is actually pretty new. Bleak Rock Barter Company has been there for a while. Um, usually there's... Um, Savage is usually there. That's weird. This is new. Mammoth Trading Company. Imperfect Cleave. So there... You can see the, the trade wars are alive and well as <laughs> just lots of trade wars going on. So this is where you sell your goods. You can see how people have everything listed. You can look at everything that they have listed. And I use, I, I use a lot of add-ons that help me to sort these out and for me to actually see how much it, co it costs because maybe I want to do what's called flipping. Like that's another way that you can make money. Where you look at how much someone is selling something for and how over or under percentage it is as far as its value. So this person is selling grease for two a piece, two gold a piece. However, this poison, because people are creating new characters, is now sells for about 50 a piece. And that's usually if you have an add-on that tells you how much something is worth. So I only know that this is 50 because either I or other people in the trade guilds that I have have actually sold this for 50. Right? This is what actually makes the market. This piece of Ambrosia fragment is actually worth 1,500 gold, not 469. So if I had the money, I could buy this and flip it. Or I could just buy this and donate it to my guild for them to give away. Bright Throats. This person is selling it for 500. It actually sells for 2,500 to people who are not doing monster sets yet. Right? But there are some people who don't do monster sets. They'll just um, they they'll do uh, two full five sets, and then they'll do a, a two piece set, or use masterwork or something like that. So this is actually worth twenty five hundred. So you could buy that and flip it in your merchant for twenty five hundred, buying and, and it'll be an eighty percent profit for you. So that's what all these numbers mean. This companion's lighting, lightning staff is being sold for 1250 It says that only companions, right? This is a companion weapon. It sells for 3900 So there's a 68% profit you can make from this. So that's what these are. All of these things, uh, these numbers that you see on the right. And then you can separate by weapons, armor, jewelry and consumables because I have awesome guild store. So awesome guild store is good. This Bog Raiders um, Infernal Staff is actually worth 10000 not 4000 That's actually a pretty good purchase. So I will buy that myself. And the Bow of the Powerful Assault um, doesn't sell for 25 even if this person is doing it. It's actually selling for 50 And these are from weapons that I haven't even gone into that storyline yet. 
So those are some of the best ways to make money and gold here in Elder Scrolls Online, the world of Tamriel. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so that you know when things are coming. Comment on your experience of what you found to be the easiest for you to make money or what system works for you. And if you really want to know how to get deeper into um, making money with crafting, let me know if you would like to actually see a crafting for money guide, then I will definitely do that for you guys. Thank you so much. And remember to be kind, be loved, be brave, be you. And I will see you next time here on my YouTube channel, The Gamer Hippie. Please don't forget to check me out on Terlucas Playground on Twitch TV as well. Bye.